Hey guys, it's Matt Wong from Sonic Scoop, and I'm very excited today to show you the new Kinef Audio Kinephonium plugin from Plugin Alliance. Now, the Kinephonium is a hardware analog to monosynth that has 26 tubes in it, two oscillators, a fourth order ladder filter, and a ring modulator, among other features. Now, the Kinephonium is a really, really hard to come by synth. It's very expensive, and they're made in small batches. But now, thanks to Plugin Alliance, we have access to the sound of this incredible sounding synth, all from the comfort of our own DAWs. The Plugin Alliance version of the Kinephonium also comes with some really cool, unique features not even found on the hardware, such as plug-in lines effects like a digital delay, MOG EQ airband, reverb, flanger, blue chorus, a phaser, uh, and it has this really unique spread feature, which I want to dive into later, as well as a panable arpeggiator, so you can play an arp and have it move around in a stereo space. So without further ado, let's dive right into what makes the Kinephonium a really cool plugin that you might want to add to your production toolkit. So as we can see here in Ableton, we've got a new initialized Kinephonium. Sounds like this. Let's go start with VCO1. And by default, our mixer is set. So we only have VCO1 up at five. We can move it up or down and make it louder or quieter or set it right around here, just right. With VCO1 going over here at the top left section, we have an octave selector. Plugin Lines has opted to use the organ stop terminology for this, or I guess the Kinephonium has it, but eight is kind of your initial note. That's the, the actual note you're playing. Four sets it an octave up, 16 sets it an octave below. And if you keep going, it's another octave down, another octave down. From here, another octave up, another oct two octaves up. So I'll just leave it at eight for now. We have coarse tune and that's in semitones and that allows us to tune the oscillator. So for instance, we could make it, I hit a C on my keyboard and if I have my coarse tune up at one, it's just playing a C sharp. Uh, that's really useful when you're playing with both oscillators, you can do some cool things. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. And then we have fine tune, which works in sense and fine tune allows us to just really minutely adjust the pitch of the oscillator. We have mod amount, which you can control by the envelope, LFO, aftertouch, or an external source. We can talk about that more in depth later. And then right here, we have our selector for picking which type of waveform we want to use. Right now, we're at saw, which sounds like this. We can go to triangle, pulse width. And with the pulse width, we have this knob here to adjust the pulse width amount. And then finally, we have a sign. Um, so as we can hear, the saw is a very aggressive type of sound. Triangle is a very nice type of smooth sound with just a little bit of harmonic information at the top end. And then the pulse is pretty diverse. We can get a lot of cool things out of it. The sign is very, very... Uh, basic and just like a round, nice, simple sound. It's also important to note that you only have the pulse width waveform on VCO1. You don't have access to that on VCO2, and hence you don't have pulse width knob like this one here. Next, we have FM mod, which is a frequency modulation. Uh, we can turn that on or off and control the amount here. And then let's go to VCO2 now. So this is VCO1. If I take it down, VCO2 in the mixer up here is on. So I'm going to move this octave knob down to 16. So we're playing an octave below. We have the same controls here, coarse tune, fine tune, mod amount, and then mod source here. So it's very, very much similar, the VCO1 and VCO2 in terms of the, the layout. So once you understand one, you understand the other, essentially. So over here, we have glide enabled for oscillators one and two. So if I hit these both off and we have VCO2 and VCO1 on, we're not going to hear any glide if I play two notes. It just transitions from one note to the next pretty, uh, pretty quickly. But now if I turn on oscillator two's glide functionality, then we'll just hear oscillator two glide between the two notes. And you can use that to get some really uh, dark and really grungy sounds. And again, if we want to have both oscillators glide, just turn them both on there. It 
it can hear it glides every time. So if I don't, if I only want um, the glide to happen when I have one note held down and then trigger another while still holding down the initial note, then I'll just set it to auto. And that way I can play a low note, go to a high note, and there's no glide. But if I hold down a low note and then while holding down that low note, hit the higher note, we'll hear the glide. So that's a little bit about the glide section here. And then we're gonna go to the mixer here and I'll just turn on VCO one, not turn it on. I'm just gonna increase the amount. It's on by default and switch it back to a sawtooth. We can introduce noise over here in the mixer as well and select what kind of noise using this little selector. Lots of tonal variations right there. Let's just go and jump now, before we talk about all this modulation stuff down here, which we might experiment more with in uh, future videos, let's talk about the envelopes. So right now I'm playing and it's a very sustained sound, uh, which makes sense because sustain is up all the way over here. Now let's try to make a pluck sound by taking the sustain down and increasing decay for envelope two, which is our VCA, which controls volume. Amazing. Fun sound there. I'm going to take the sustain back up a bit and we're gonna increase the attack time so we get a nice smooth and slow elevation to the peak point of our sound. And once it reaches that peak based off our decay time, which is long right now, it'll take a while before it dives back down to the sustain period. So here's this sound. When I release the key, it, it's pretty immediate that there's no sound immediately after I release the note. So I'm just gonna turn up the release now too. So I can play a note, release my finger from the key, and you still hear it as it trails off a little bit. Over here you have access to velocity on or off, and that just controls how your velocity affects the uh, volume of what you're playing. And then time times five, which actually increases the amount of time it takes with attack, decay, or sustain by about five times. I'm going to turn it on and let's hear it. And now it should take a lot longer for this attack time to reach its full value. So that's pretty fun. Lots of controls for VCA2. We also have these same controls for envelope one, which we can assign envelope one to a lot of different things within the plugin, such as a mod amount for VCO2 or the filter. And we'll just play around with that in the filter because that's probably one of the most common reasons to have a second envelope. So I'm gonna take the filter down and this is a low pass filter. Let's increase the volume a little to make up for the lack of frequencies up there. Um, we have keyboard tracking, which means the higher I turn this up, the more the filter opens, the higher I play on the keyboard. That's very useful because when I'm playing low notes, I might want some of the high end frequencies gone. So that's a really bassy sound. And then as it get higher, if the filter stayed in like a lower area, you might not hear some of the higher notes. So by turning keyboard tracking on, the filter moves as I play higher and you can hear those higher notes. Uh, you have access to resonance here which just makes more of a resonant peak where the filter cutoff stops. Let's try playing with the resonance and hear how it sounds. It's a very musical sounding filter uh, and I really love it. And now we're going to just introduce a bit of the mod F amount, which is mod filter amount. And I'm going to select under mod sources envelope one to positive. So that means that my envelope, if I have it set to decay like this, for instance, will open up just according to the amount of the mod F here. And it will have the envelope shape of envelope one, which in this case, I just have it with a short decay time. So it should make a bit of a plucky sound and I'm excited to hear how this sounds. We can even add some attack, make it more of a pad. 
maybe even more attack. And to make it really more of a pad, we should probably increase the attack time for envelope too, for the VCA. Not much of a pad yet, as it is still a monophonic sound, and we'll dive more into pad making later. To play a pad, you typically don't just use one note. So we're going to go into the options section up here at the top, and we're going to increase the voice handling. So thanks to Plugin Alliance, we have access from one voice up to eight. So we could play up to eight notes of a chord, for instance, or we could introduce unison as well, and we could stack up to eight voices on one key and one note and really just widen the sound. We have access to TMT up here, which you can turn on or off, um, which stands for Tolerance Modeling Technology, which is a technology that Plugin Alliance and Brainworks have used. It really just adds a little bit of variation between each of the oscillator sounds and, I don't know, makes the whole thing come to life a bit more. So let's turn the voice count up to four and let's play multiple notes now. And now that sound that really didn't sound like too much of a pad earlier really has more of that character. We can also, under the envelopes, just turn off velocity sensitivity just because it will make everything just sound pretty consistent and won't uh, change depending on the velocity of which we hit the keyboard. And before we talk about the ARP, I actually want to talk about the spread, which is in the oscillators, because the ARP has a lot of really cool features for panning. Under VCO1, you can see this spread control, and this isn't found on the actual hardware. Again, it's a thing that Plugin Alliance has introduced only to the plugin version of the Kinephonium. So if I raise the spread up, we'll hear the oscillator spread out more in a stereo field. I'm going to take VCO2 off. And I'll make the attack time a little shorter too, so we can hear this. And this is VCO1 without any spread. And now full spread. It's pretty cool. So we have a lot more of a wide sound now. And you have independent control of spread for VCO2 over here too. So now if I go to VCO2 and we just hear that. And now we introduce spread. It's really nice to just create more of a space for the sound. Uh, and I'm going to keep the spread down on the bottom oscillator and full on VCO1. Now with the arpeggiator, we have access to as played modes, up, up, or down, then up, and a couple other modes that you can read more about in the manual, such as randomize, which kind of just randomly picks which note to play. You have an octave selector here, so you can play just the octave you played. If I have plus one, it will trigger the, all the notes that I played, plus all of them an octave up. Plus two will do the same, but with octave two octaves higher. And I can actually disable all of them and just only play two octaves up, um, or just as played and four octaves up, for instance. So it's really cool that you have that control here. You have options for controlling the triggering of notes, uh, which is really useful for glide, and then the clock. So if I turn on the arpeggiator now and just play a chord. I can increase the divider and make the arpeggiator faster. Or I can make it slower. I can introduce some swing using this knob here. And I can control with the panning section here, if I turn this on, the direction of the sound. So here it's left to right, and now if I play a chord, the sound moves from left to right. Finally, we have the effects section up here and options for delay, the airband, reverb, flanger, blue chorus, metal 666, phaser, EQ ranger, and wave folder. You can change the effects chain however you like and move these effects around.
There's a help section down here, which opens up the manual if you have any questions and you can learn more about Kinephonium there. I hope you found this look at the Kinephonium pretty helpful and we'll be showing some more videos soon talking about more in-depth parts of the Kinephonium and really diving into certain sections. If you enjoyed watching this video, I highly encourage you to download the demo of the Kinephonium and try it on your own system and see how it works for your needs. Till next time, it's Matthew Wong from Sonic Scoop, and I hope you have a great day.